Thank you for tuning in to another episode of In Range. I'm coming to you today from the French Quarter in New Orleans, Louisiana, standing in front of one of the most, most historic homes here. This is the Beauregard Kai's house. P.T. Beauregard was a Civil War general, lived here briefly, never owned the place, but his namesake still stands. That's a whole nother story. Frances Kai's was a very famous author who lived here from 1945 to 1970. Very incredible woman. She was a prolific writer. She interviewed world dignitaries like Mussolini and the Pope himself and was ordered the Legion of Honor from France itself. She lived here until 1970s. When she got here, though, this house was a ruin and had to have it rebuilt in 1945. But this house hadn't been a ruin before. In the 1870s, the French Quarter was pretty much a slum, and immigrants coming to this country needed an affordable place to go. And many Italian immigrants landed up right here in what we call today the French Quarter. But so many Italian immigrants came here that it became renamed Little Palermo. One of those Italian immigrant families that came here to New Orleans to settle in this house was the Giacones. But here, to my left, your frame right, would have been the mural for the Giacona Wine Factory or Wine Company. And to my right, your left, was the basement they used to store their goods. They already had a successful wine business in the old world, but they came here to the United States to expand their business efforts. And this home was their headquarters for that wine industry. So it wasn't just people and immigrants coming to the new world to try and make their business interests and success happen. Crime lords also came as well. The old world was rife with crime syndicates, the mob or mafia as we refer to it today. And coming to the new world of the United States was a perceived refuge away from that issue. People over there were extorted against, killed, murdered. Protection fees were charged and coming here was an idea that you would get away from the mafiosos. However, that's not necessarily the case because when Little Palermo flourished with Italians, a lot of that organized crime came with them. One of the most powerful was called the Black Hand. Pietro was running his wine business here successfully. However, the Black Hand came to him amongst many other Italian immigrants and were forcing him to pay protection fees, extortion fees, and others. He wasn't really taking to this and was not liking this in the New World. On June 16, 1908, he invited some of the Black Hand to come over to pay their supposed protection fee. Invited them into his house, they walked up these steps here to the back gallery. June here in New Orleans is very hot and humid. It is a place that you don't want to be sitting inside, especially without air conditioning. Many of them stripped down to their undergarments, sat down at his table to have negotiations about he was how he was going to pay the Black Hand their protection fees. Four members of the Black Hand arrive at this house at 9.30 p.m., are invited to the back gallery to have wine and some food while they negotiate what they're going to do to deal with these protection fees. Pietro's there hosting them. His son Corrado is nearby. By midnight, the negotiations aren't going that well. Um, some of the mafiosos or the black hand actually make some not so veiled threats like how would you feel if you found your son floating in the Mississippi River or what would it be like or how could you afford it if your house exploded and burned down around your ears in the middle of the night or wouldn't it be a shame if all of your wine bottles were broken before they were received to your basement for distribution to your customers. He was a little bit tired of this and walked to the back room ostensibly to get them their money after one of them whispered to him supposedly you will give us our money. He comes out of that back door armed with a repeating rifle chambered in 35 Winchester and opens fire immediately on the four members of the Black Hand. And this is where the story becomes a little hazy. There's potentially one of the members of the Black Hand pulled out a 30 caliber revolver and was pointing it at the sun, was getting ready to shoot him or did fire the round and Pietro fired back or Pietro opened fire where they had no warning or maybe Corrado himself fired at the Black Hand as well. There are multiple variations of that. However, the one that makes the most sense is that one of the Black Hand members was armed with a revolver, pulled it and fired it and Pietro fired in return and hit all four men in succession rapidly. Three of them were killed immediately on the spot. The remaining survivor member of the Black Hand ran down the stairs, back behind the house, turned left, went out of what would have been the carriage house, out onto Ursuline Street, turned right, ran a couple blocks, turned left on Bourbon Street, and collapsed in a shed. Now Bourbon Street and St. Philip holding a piece of raw chicken meat to a wound in his chest as a weird form of early 1908 dirt medicine. He actually survived the shooting and was the only one of the four members of a Black Hand to do so. Pietro and Corrado were charged with murder for this and were taken to court. However, there was no way to convict them as the people around here were tired of the activities of the Black Hand and they were seen as pretty much heroes in the community for actually defying the Mafia. After this, the Black Hand lost their power and that version of organized crime here in New Orleans pretty much died off, the Black Hand losing all of their power based on this one event here at this house, June 16th, 1908 at midnight. 
So a house built in 1826 that's still standing in 2019 probably has gone through a lot of renovations and the Beauregard Kai's house is no exception to that. The gardens behind me existed during Beauregard's time but did not exist by the time Kai's got here because it had been overbuilt with a macaroni factory. So that being said, there are things that are conflicting about the actual shooting report when you look at the newspapers. You'll see newspapers saying that it happened in the dining room or you'll see a history book saying it happened in the dining room but you'll see other reports saying it happened in the gallery. The gallery is essentially a balcony on the back of the house. Many houses here in the French Quarter have that. And it's an unenclosed area that people would frequently sit on, relax, and enjoy a glass of wine away from the heat of being inside the house, especially in the summer here near the Mississippi River. However, today, what was the gallery during the shooting in 1908 is now the dining room. It was enclosed in 1910 by the Giacone family and modified to make their house a little bigger. And then Kai's continued to actually renovate it further, enclosing it further, adding air conditioning, electricity, etc. But in 1908, that was the gallery. So if you look on the internet, you'll find pictures of people saying the gallery that's there today is where the shooting happened. And that's actually incorrect. The dining room still has a sloped floor in it, which is indicative of the architecture of it being the gallery then and the dining room now, and thus conflicting reports. The only way to find out stuff like this, though, is to come to sites like this and actually walk in the places that they happened. Reading books, magazines, and archives just don't do credit to actually go into the location of where history occurred, and that's what we found out here today. All right, so a couple things come to mind here. Some things I'm not really clear about, and history is never clean, right? So in one instance of the story, you have these new immigrants coming to America and using their Second Amendment rights to fight essentially an organized crime ring, the Black Hand, who was also using firearms and explosives and threats to suppress innocent people just trying to run their businesses. Or could it have been two crime syndicates competing? We don't know for sure, but what we do know is Corrado, who was the son that was there when this shooting occurred, later in life, around 1922 to the late early 1940s, was considered the new mafia boss of what was called the New New Orleans Mafia, or another organized crime ring different than the Black Hand. So we have the Black Hand doing all sorts of intimidation tactics against little Palermo citizens in the 1870s up until 1908, but then we have a new mafia forming around 1922 probably amongst others. So in this regard, hard to say, but we do know that the Black Hand's power grip around Little Palermo died on that day in 1908. Guys, if you like this kind of content, hopefully you'll consider supporting us on Patreon. It's Patreon that allows us to have the funds to come to a place like this and spend our time researching historical elements and topics like this that hopefully you'll find interesting. If you already are doing that, we thank you. If we can't do that or you can't do that, we understand. Please just subscribe to one of our multiple distribution points. You can find them all on inrange.tv and share with your friends.